Skyrim fixed quite a few issues that had plagued Oblivion. The weird scaled leveling, the inability to unnotch an arrow, but I'm not talking about that today. Today, I'm talking about the little things that Skyrim somehow screwed up that honestly probably aren't that big of a deal, but I'm blowing them out of proportion anyway. So here are five petty reasons Oblivion is better than Skyrim. It doesn't surprise me that Bethesda decided to remove the acrobatic skill from Skyrim, because it was kind of weird. And based on their level design, it could have been pretty game-breaking. But quite frankly, I would much rather have it than not, because there were a lot of cool things that you could do with it. And sure, you can still jump in Skyrim, but jumping is no longer as important as it used to be. Its only purpose now is so that way you don't have to walk around a fence. It was hard enough losing levitation from Morrowind, but with the acrobatic skill now completely gone, suddenly we've lost an entire dimension of movement. Skulking on the rooftops to find the perfect vantage point is now no longer feasible, and escaping through a third story balcony would probably mean your death. But, like I said before, the acrobatic skill is a weird thing. I mean, jumping in real life is definitely a skill, but I've never seen anyone bound 15 feet into the air. But this is a world of magic, so I don't see why it couldn't have been introduced as a secret skill that is only increased using magic or enchantments. I mean, it is something that is part of the Elder Scrolls canon. So now that it is gone, I have to wonder, what happened to it? If there is one thing Skyrim has on Oblivion, it's that the cities look well designed. That being said, I have a hard time calling them cities because they are kinda small. At least in comparison to Oblivion cities, which is partly due to them being more compact, but they also do contain fewer buildings. Take Markarth for example. There are only 18 separate buildings, whereas each city in Oblivion has around 23 separate buildings. The only one that falls lower than Markarth is Anvil, and only because half of its shops and the castle itself are located outside of the city. But if we compared Anvil's interior of 16 buildings to the city of Dawnstar, which has only 12, then Anvil still looks pretty good. By the way, that includes this boat here. You're welcome, Dawnstar. And before you start going, oh well, of course Oblivion is bigger, it's the capital. None of these games are built into scale with each other. If they were, then Daggerfall would be its own continent. But not only are the cities smaller, there are also fewer of them. Skyrim contains eight cities, which includes the dinky towns of Dawnstar, Falkreath, and Morthal. Whereas Oblivion contains nine cities that are each fully developed. Of course, if I include Winterhold, then Skyrim would have nine as well, but if I do that, then it's only fair that I include every district of the Imperial City, which most of them contain as many buildings as any city in Oblivion. And with that included, then Skyrim would have nine cities, and Oblivion would have 18 which just puts Skyrim to shame. But there is one last thing I take issue with Skyrim cities, and that is the fact that they can't even hold the population that lives in them. I mean, why does Nazim live in the Drunken Huntsman? It's hilarious, sure, but he should have his own house. He has a key for it, at least. Would it be that difficult to drag and drop one in? Apparently it would, since they didn't do it. Hmm, I know a way of resolving this issue. <sighs> there, problem solved. One thing I like better in Oblivion is the combat. Whoa, hold up there, put your pitchforks away. I get that combat is one of the biggest reasons people say Skyrim is better than Oblivion. As a matter of fact, I used to agree with you. It feels more weighty, I would say. There are cool animations, I would also say. You can cut a guy's head off is something else I might say. That is undeniably cool. But after seeing them over and over and over again, I don't really care anymore. But even without the animations, the combat just feels off. In Oblivion, if I start swinging wildly with my sword, it'll just keep going. I mean, look at it. But in Skyrim, the character pauses for a moment in between attacks and tries to return their sword to its resting position, which makes fighting feel slow and clunky. I also have a problem with the way hitting and getting hit feels in Skyrim. I mean, I realize that when you hit someone in Oblivion, it feels like you're attacking them with a balloon, but Skyrim still found a way to make combat feel less dangerous. Because in Oblivion, blocking is a lot more important. If you don't block an attack, then there's a good chance they could knock you out of the fight for a few seconds. And in those seconds, your enemy could kill you. Whereas in Skyrim, if you get hit, it might as well not matter at all. Yeah, your life bar goes down and the camera shakes a bit, but you can still attack them. And honestly, that's just weird. Because if someone hit me with a sword in real life, I'm gonna need some recovery time. 
But that isn't all, because another thing that drives me crazy is now I can't attack while jumping. It's not like it's an impossible task, I could do it in real life. There, I did it. Chew on that, Todd Howard. And since we're on the topic of that, you can't attack underwater either. Which, honestly, I would have been totally fine with. I mean, have you ever attempted to swing something underwater? It's almost impossible. But if I can't attack, then why are there still slaughterfish? If you're gonna stick an enemy in the water that continuously attacks me and prevents me from fast traveling, at least let me kill it. When it was revealed that the spellcrafting system would not be making it into Skyrim, I was pretty disappointed. And even to this day, I don't really understand why it wasn't included. Todd Howard's explanation for it is that the system feels too spreadsheety. That when all of a sudden you can create any spell you want, it stops feeling magical. But you know what? That's a load of crap. Spellcrafting in Oblivion wasn't something that just anybody could do. You had to earn the right to do it. Because you couldn't make spells until you joined the Arcane University. But once you finally got there, it felt like you had really earned it. And what makes this even more frustrating is when you enter the College of Winterhold, it feels like every other student is attempting to create new spells. But you aren't because you can't. And that just adds salt to the wound. So here's an idea, Todd. How about you just make it more dangerous to make a spell? Oh! That'd make it feel more special. Maybe you want to make a feather spell, but there's a chance you'll die because you accidentally turned into a feather. I don't know. I came up with this idea in literally two seconds. So are you trying to tell me that your team could not come up with that during the years of development? Because that's ridiculous. One thing I really love from Oblivion is the arena. It may not be the best quest line, and it may be very, very repetitive, but it's an arena. I mean, did you really expect any different? But despite those problems, the feeling of rising through the ranks in gladiatorial combat was exhilarating, only reinforced by the fantastic arena announcer. Good people of the Imperial City, welcome to the arena. And the people, by God, do I love them. You have the uptight arena matron, the sarcastic blades master, and of course, we can't forget the yellow team champion. So it's blood letter now, is it? I remember when I achieved that rank so very long ago. I showed such promise, unlike yourself. Man, it was good killing her in front of a roaring crowd. I even like, and I can't believe I'm saying this, but I even like the adoring fan. Yeah, he is the most annoying character ever created, but just knowing that after all my fame and hard work, there was someone so dedicated to my existence that they spent every waking minute hanging out on the arena grounds waiting to get a glimpse of me made it feel like I really had an effect on this world. People really cared. So as you might imagine, when I realized that there was no arena in Skyrim, I was more than a bit disappointed. And after reading about the arena that had been cut from the game, I'm even more disappointed. Because it sounds like it could have been even better than the one in Oblivion, with there even being a connection to the Dark Brotherhood. Well, like I stated in the beginning, these are some pretty petty reasons for liking Oblivion over Skyrim. But I'm curious, do you have a petty reason why you like one game or another? Maybe you hate the way magic works in Skyrim. Or you think the faces in Oblivion are just really ugly. Let's continue this discussion in the comments. Also, make sure to hit that subscribe button while you're at it if you aren't subscribed already. And before you leave, you should check out my last video if you haven't seen it, called 5 Things Oblivion Did Better Than Skyrim. Or an old video I did on the 5 Best Oblivion Quests. I will see you guys there.